Welcome to Well-Crafted Studio. I'm here to help you live inspired and create with purpose. So let's get started. So today's tutorial is how to create a mug in Cup Cozy. Yes, two projects. However, I'm just gonna really show you on this video how to use your Cricut to cut the fabric and then how to sew the Cup Cozy. So the Mug Cozy is awesome and I'll have that all on my blog, but for our purposes today, I thought I would show you the Cup Cozy because we're actually gonna use a Cricut cut file and use the um, rotary blade on the Cricut to cut it. So kind of exciting stuff. And then we're going to put a gnome on it. Yes, you heard me right, a gnome, because I've gone a little bit nuts about gnomes. Last year it was a gnome and then it was three gnomes. And now this week we're gonna have a whole week of gnomes. So over at wellcraftedstudio.com, we're gonna have all kinds of gnome projects. I've got some friends that are other bloggers that are gonna be um, have their own projects going this week. So if you head over to the blog, you're gonna find a lot of really fun gnome things. So I'm kind of excited about that. The gnomes are kind of taking over. They're gonna have their own little craft party and we're all invited. We're gonna start our project out at wellcraftedstudio.com. And the reason that we're here is because in the library, I have all kinds of things for us. So today's pr project with the Cup Cozy, I actually have a cut file for that. So you can see if you page down to Project Templates and Designs, you'll find the Coffee To Go Cozy Cut File, which is the SVG, and then the To Go Cozy Pattern and the Mug Cozy Pattern. So those two patterns are PDF files, which means that you can go ahead and print them out. And these are going to be like your old-fashioned patterns where you print them out, you go ahead and you cut around it, and that gives you the sizes that you want. So that works completely, you know, totally works. But what I wanted to do was show you today how to use the cut files with your fabric. And the reason that I think this is gonna be really cool is that these little cozies are adorable and they're gonna sell really well at something like a craft fair. So if you are a small maker and you wanted to make something like this, going and printing out the PDF and then tracing the patterns and cutting the patterns and all that thing sort of thing, um, it, it totally works fine. But if you have a better way of doing it, then of course we want to know. So this is going to be a lead, like a better, easier way of doing it. So I'm in Cricut Design Space now and I have a new canvas. So I'm going to go ahead to upload here and that's going to prompt me to, oops, it's going to show me a bunch of the designs that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and put upload image because I need my new one. And there it is in projects in use. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then say open, and there it is. So this again is an SVG cut file. So Cricut loves those. There it is, we're gonna click to select and then put insert image. So there it is. Now I know that this is incorrectly sized and so um, on the, the PDF pattern it shows you but then I'll have it in the blog post too but we're gonna be making this about 10 inches wide. So I'm just come up to the width and put in a 10 and then that adjusts the whole pattern. So that's good. So this down here is 10 inches across and that's our largest piece. Now, when we create the cup cozies, we're gonna actually need two of these large pieces and then one of these. The smaller piece is fusible interfacing. So what I wanna do is separate out these two. So I can come over here to ungroup and now I have two separate pieces, but they're all, they're both sized correctly. So in order to get the second piece of the fabric, we'll just come up now, this is still selected, and we'll come up and do duplicate. It's like magic. So looking good, but it's kind of hard to kind of figure out what's what. So I'm gonna come up and change the color of my material to white here. And then I'm changing one of these to red and then I have one in black. So the cup cozies as I'm envisioning them is it's gonna be flannel red and black on one side and black and white on the other side. So it's, it's gonna look kind of cool that way. So just this kind of helps me figure it out, you know, how things are gonna kind of progress. Now, I mentioned that if you are a small crafter, um, this is a better way of doing things. So say you wanted to make 10 of these. So what I could do at this point is I could go ahead and duplicate, or sorry, select all, and then I could duplicate, you know, 10 times, and or nine times, and then I would have 10 of these all ready to go. I'm just gonna show you how to do that with two of them right now. 
but it's the same process. So we're going to say I duplicated it once, so we have two copies of each now. So now we're going to say make it. And what Cricut did right away is because each one of those was a separate color, it grouped it according to color. So we have the white, which was our infusible interfacing. We have the two, which are the black, which is one of the fabrics, and the three, which is another set of fabrics. So enough for two cozies. Now you can see here, there's actually room on just like one mat for th a third, no problem. But if you go ahead and change it to the 12 by 24, then suddenly we're fitting six of these on. So it's it's going to make it a lot easier for you if you are you know wanting to make multiples of things. You know, even if it's just for the office Christmas party and you want to hand out to all your friends. So, okay, so we're good and we're going to go to continue. Okay, so while it's finding my maker, I'm going to go ahead and switch on my camera so you guys can see the, the table view. Okay, so we're ready to cut, but first we want to go ahead and put our fabrics onto the, the mat. So I just wanted to show you guys quick. Um, so I did this I already cut this project in it with the flannel and it cut great, but it really left a mess here. And so I did a little bit of looking around and it, someone suggested that you go ahead and put transfer tape down. So I tried that and it works really well. So what you just want to do is go ahead and fit this. I have a piece cut to size and you're going to go ahead and just press it down. And if you have a brayer and want to use that, that works really good. And then we're just going to peel this back so that we have our sticky surface here. So what that's going to do is it's going to give us a surface to stick to, but it's also going to um, keep our, nice, our mat a little nicer. Okay, so I'm going to come in here over to Cricut Design Space again, and I'm going to tell them that the fabric I want to, or the material I'm going to cut is fusible fleece. So I'll do browse all materials, and then just up in the search box, we're going to do fusible fleece. And there it is. So I've got selected, and we'll say done. And so now it knows that it's fusible fleece, it's telling us that we need to put in our rotary blade, which I've already done. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece here, and I'm just gonna double check to see what the mat looks like. And it looks like it's 10 inches by seven inches, and I think that's what I cut it towards. So I'm just gonna position this here, and I'll make it kinda look like it does with the mat or on the, on the screen. We're just gonna press everything down good. Okay, so everything is set up. We're gonna go ahead and feed our mat in. And there it's blinking, it's the go light. Okay, let's unload on that, and we'll take a look. You can see that looks really good. No, it just kind of pulls away from it. Okay, so we've got our two pieces. There's a little bit of catch every once in a while with some of the fibers. And I could just go ahead and use a scissor and clip that, I suppose. But it looks really good. Okay, so we have our two pieces. They're just perfectly cut. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set up this next cut. And with the, the one thing with the flannels is that they are, you know, very patterned grid-wise. So when we cut, we don't want, we kind of want to like set it up so that the, 
pattern is straight and not going where? So let's just see if we can do that. That looks really good. I'm just going to kind of rub out all the things. And again, if you have a brayer, those are su super sweet to have with us. Okay, so load her up. Oh, and actually, so I've got it down just a little bit here. So I want to double check that my position on the mat. Oops, just going to say edit. Okay, so actually, yeah, on the mat there, I've got the fabric down quite a bit from where it's showing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull those down. So I can make sure that they're right on the mat. Okay, so we're going to say done. And we're going to load our mat and I'm going to cut this one. Okay, so before I unload, I'm just going to check the cut here a little bit. It did. It did kind of not go through everywhere. Okay, so it wasn't quite done, so I'm going to run it through one more time. And because I didn't unload my mat, I can do that. So now I'm just going to press that little cricket again. And we'll give it a shot. Let's take a look at this now. And yeah, that looks really good. All right, so I'm gonna unload that. Okay, still a couple places where it's the fibers are just kind of catching. But yeah, that looks good. Cool! And like just really nice cuts there too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Kind of peel this away from it. Looks like I cut my tape too some. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. Got my fusible interfacing, so you guys can see here. That those are going to fit together really nicely. So let's go ahead and do the next piece. So. We're going to try something. So this last one here, I didn't change the setting from fusible fleece. So let's go ahead this time and cut it again and let's change our settings to flannel. Okay, so I have my fa fabric on. I'm going to come up here to fusible fleece and clicked on it and now it's giving me the option to change my fabric or my material. So I'm going to come over here to browse materials again and we're going to type in flannel. Oops, that's not how you spell it. All right, so there we go, flannel. And I'm actually using the Platitudes flannel, which is a little bit thicker than some flannels, but I really like it. And so we've got our flannel, and then let's just go ahead and see if we can change our default to more. And we'll see how our cut looks. All right, so we did that, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's down, and feed this in. So we have our two pieces of our fabric 
So the, the two sets, so there's the two outer, the two inner, and then the two of the fusible fleece. And the fusible fleece is a, it's got a, like a little um, rough side to it because that's actually the adhesive. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to work with that next. But just really quickly, here is the Coffee Cup Cozy PDF pattern. So you can see it has the outline, which is the bigger piece, and then the inner piece is this right here. So again, you could totally have done this with this. Um, but wasn't it so easy? So along with, along with the cup cozy, we have a mug cozy pattern. And this one I didn't show you guys just because it is all straight lines. So I went ahead and cut some of those already. And so we'll go ahead and we'll make those up as well. So yeah, I'm going to go set up my sewing machine. Okay, so the first step was cutting the fabric. The second step now is adding the fusible fleece to the fabric. So what we're going to do is use our little mini press iron, a piece of parchment paper, and then we have our cut pieces. So the fusible fleece again has that rougher texture on one side and that's the adhesive. So we're going to put it down on the fabric and we're making sure that we're putting it on the wrong side. So this side looked a little fuzzier to me. Well, actually, maybe, let's see. It's hard to tell with flannel. It really isn't a wrong or a right, in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and do it like so just centered it and then we're gonna let's see go ahead you can either flip it over but really what I found best when I was working with a uh, just kind of testing this was to put a piece of parchment over it and then go ahead and then keeping your iron going and you can use a regular house out iron for this you just want to keep it moving a little bit and about maybe 15 20 seconds over the whole thing And the reason for the parchment paper is that the iron could feasibly melt the fleece. But when I flipped it over and tried to iron from the other side, it worked, but not as well as this does. So I tried ironing from this side and I didn't like it as well. This has got a better bond and it was a little quicker. But I noticed that I didn't get the edges as much because I was moving around the center. So you just kind of want to take a look and see. And that's all there is to it. So I went ahead and I did this on my pieces, my mug cozy as well. And then here is my piece. So I'm going to set these two together because it's going to take the two fabric pieces and then the fusible fleece. And that is going to be one set for us. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and do the rest. And then I'll show you how to sew. So we've got all the things that we need right here. I've got um, some rubber bands for hair. These are elastic, so this is what we're going to be using for this piece right here that goes around the button and holds it on. We've got a scissor, and we've got, you just want something that has kind of a dull, sharp end. So, or dull pointed end, not sharp, so that we can help us, um, it'll help us turn the corners. And then I've got my little iron again, because that just kind of helps to be able to um, give it a real nice, professional, crisp look when you're done. So, we're going to start, and we're going to take one of these. And this is going to go on the inside like so, because when we flip this out, then you'll see it. It's kind of tricky, but fun. And then the only other thing I want to mention is that we want to just make sure that everything's really lined up. Because when you go to sew, having the edges lined up is going to help a lot. And then we're not giving ourselves a huge um, allowance here, seam allowance. We're only doing about an eighth of an inch. So we're going to start about here and then we're going to go all the way around and end here. And what we're doing is we're giving ourselves a pocket so that we can turn it. And yeah, you'll see. So we're going to start kind of right here at the end edge here. And for me, what I can do is I can just look and see that the edge of my fabric is going to be on the inside of my presser, presser foot. So that, and there's a little grid here, so that's really only half or an eighth of an inch. But we didn't want a lot of bulk. And you just kind of go slow, you get up to those corners, and when you get to the corner, you put your needle down by you turning the crank, and then you pivot it. And because we're going so close to the edge, um, you really want to make sure that those fabrics are stacked right on top of each other because if the under one underneath is off at all, 
then you might miss it. Although all of these things can be fixed. Anything that goes wrong, really. So again, just taking it kind of slow. And then I'm going to slide or twist, turn it around, like t pivot it again. And then I'm just going to get and make sure that everything's kind of lined up good. And then slip my elastic in there so that most of it's right here. And there's a little bit pe peeking out so that I can go ahead and just sew right over the top there. It kind of wants to squish this way a little, so I'm just going to lift up my foot just a bit. And then just go slow. And then if you want to back over it again, you can. Go over it again. Get to that corner, so I'm going to crank it down again. And then pivot it. And when you get, to, you don't want to stitch it shut because you need to turn it. So you're just going to do about like a half an inch or so. And then you're going to stop and either use your anchor um, stitch or do the re stitch forward and then reverse. Okay, and then we're going to lift up our presser foot and pull it. And then I just clipped off the threads on the side. So then we're going to want to go ahead and clip these corners, but being careful not to clip through our stitching. And really, probably it's, don't need to clip them at all. It's pretty small. And then if you want to clip off your hair binder, the edge of it, you can. And then we're just going to go ahead and turn it. Now, if you didn't leave yourself enough room there, then you can go ahead and make that a little wider if you want. I don't know. I like the eighth of an inch on this, um, but I might go back and adjust the pattern so it's a quarter of an inch allowance just so that you guys can have a little bit more room to work. So pay attention to, I'm going to have the instructions on the blog post. So when you go and you pick up the um, pattern, you can go ahead and check that too. Okay, so there we've got it. I'm going to use my paintbrush, just kind of poke out those corners just a little bit. You're just kind of edging it. You don't want to just poke, poke. You want to just kind of um, edge the fabric out a little bit. Ease it out, not edge it out, I guess. This gives it a nice look. Okay, so now we've got this end right here. And so the easiest way to do this kind of edge is to go ahead and press it. Because what we're trying, gonna try to do is get the fabric to kind of, um, we want it to kind of fold in on itself so that we don't have that edge. And then we have what looks like to be a nice seamed edge like all the rest. So a lot of times what I'll do is just go ahead and Take my iron and kind of fold over one side and just do a little bit of a press. That's actually where this um, Cricut Mini helps a little bit. And again, you can use a household iron too. Or a little quilting iron if you have it. Um, 
or you don't need to iron it at all. You can just kind of hold them in. But anything that makes it a little easier, I think, is... Okay, so actually get that out just a little bit more. Okay, so I've got everything, my edges folded in, and now I'm just going to start. I'm just going to make sure that they're kind of covered. So I'm just trying to get them even, because this is one of those last little things. And then we're just going to stitch right over that opening giving ourselves that eighth of an inch again. And then we're gonna stitch, it's called a top stitch. We're gonna stitch all the way around. And really I could have probably taken the iron and done a little press here too. But we're just gonna go ahead and top stitch. back to where I started. Just go over a little bit and then do that anchor stitch. Pull it out and then clip my thread threads and we've got it. So I go, guess I hope you guys saw how easy that was. So it's a lot of it's just the kind of the prep work, the cutting, and then the final um, stitching goes pretty quickly. And it's a lot of just paying attention to detail and not going super fast. So even if you've got little to no sewing experience, I know that you guys can do this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the rest of these up and then I'm going to um, show you how to add the gnome in the button. So to sew on the button I just took some thread, doubled it over through my needle and then tied off the end. And I'm actually going to start at the front of this, right where the button's going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and start it. And the button's actually going to hide that knot nicely. So I'll go ahead like this. So I'm just going to come through from the back again. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm pushing the button or placing the button really close to the edge here. Um, just because then my this doesn't have to like stretch so far. And then I'm just going to go through the holes like so. So the reason I'm showing you this, and some of you are like, oh, sewing on a button. But when I started doing this a couple years ago, I really didn't even know how to do this. So you just want to make sure that there's a little bit of a give here. And that's going to be fine with this. So we're good. And then just the fact that you don't have to start it on the back. And then you can end it on the front underneath the button as well. Just go ahead and create a little loop. putting your needle through and then you just kind of shimmy it on down there as close as possible and then clip and you've got a really nice stitched button and you want to go through that a couple times but there you go that's looking pretty good okay let's add a gnome and I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well Okay, now for the gnome de resistance. So I've got my little piece of felt that I cut from a big piece of felt. And it looks kind of like a little triangle that I then clip the ends. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a little bit of hot glue. I already tried it a little here. We're just going to bend down that point. Like so. 
And then we're going to go ahead and just wrap this so that the ends overlap like this. I'm going to go ahead and put a little hot glue there. And just wrap it over. And the seam will be on the back, so you don't need to worry about the glue showing. Okay, there we got a little hat. And then for the beard, I actually use pom-pom yarn a lot. So we can go ahead with different colors. I think I'm going to do... I just kind of cut the strings. And then have those in the back. The little parts. And then I'm just going to go ahead and... So you have the option of go ahead and put it right in the middle or you can kind of put it on the side. When you hold the cup, um, I tried it out and it really doesn't matter where you, you know, want to hold it. It's going to feel fine any which way. So I was thinking that I would, I tried it this time, or last time here. I think I'm going to move it over here a little bit next, this time. And then we'll just do some product testing and I'll let you know in the blog post what I think. I'm just going to put some more hot glue there and place that on kind of towards the bottom and then again with the hat I'm going to put some hot glue here and we're going to just kind of nuzzle that right in there got some strings so we'll pull those off when they're dry I'll just kind of pull that down here a little bit. And then as far as the little nose goes, um, I was using little button tops for dowels and uh, they didn't have those at the craft store this last time and I didn't want to go to the hardware store. So I just found this Art Minds brand and it had these little axle pegs. So I used a pruners and just clipped off the end. So it's actually a little button nose too. So again, we're just going to do the hot glue. And then right up near the hat, we're going to go ahead and put that. And then we don't have to mess with the eyes or anything like that. And they look all cute. And then as far as the beard color goes with the pom-pom yarn, you get some different colors, which is kind of fun. But you guys, this is it. Let me grab my mug and I'll show you. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and if you found it helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And for more tutorials like this, visit wellcraftedstudio.com.